Welcome to Spa Business Mastery. My name is Kirsten Foss and today is a special day every month. We have Delia Taylor here for a spa marketing with Delia Taylor. And today's topic is all about hosting profitable spa events. But more specifically, we want to talk about eight reasons why you are probably struggling to host your uh, profitable spa event because and there's a reason why we want to talk about this today, right, Delia? <laughs> right. We're pretty excited about this. <laughs> so um, over the past, I think it's been, we're on week 13. Yeah, three months. Yeah, yeah three months. past three months. Uh, Delia and I have been in a launch, launch manager certification program. Uh, and we're wrapping it up this week. We're finishing our capstone project. And so we're, we're totally excited to cross the finish line. And as such, we wanted to start sharing some information about launches and, but in context for the spa industry, because the spa industry typically uh, has event launches, pr very traditional for us to have a, uh, like an event in the spring, an event in the fall. Um, however, both Delia and I see a huge opportunity that the spa industry has not really been aware of, um, which is why we took this launch manager certification program, because we saw an opportunity in the spa industry to do event launches much, much, much better. And when I say much, much better, I'm talking about way more profitable and making it much easier for you to uh, to host that event because lord knows we didn't realize quite even and when we got into this course how how much is involved in launching a an event or a new product or a new service or whatever it is you want to launch awesome. what do you say delia <laughs> i think there's a lot of details that go into it that you know, I think you have maybe an idea of what needs to happen, but then there's also, you know, so many pieces that um, we we were privy to in this course as well. And I guess, and, and in that respect, it just helps to fill in those missing pieces that a lot of spa owners and, you know, myself as a former spa owner, I recognized in certain things that maybe I could have done, recognize some gaps in, in my launches as well. And to just really, really optimize those, those events so that they work for you and, yeah. and they build that profitability and that awareness to your clients. Well, and I think that, um, you know, the traditional events that the spa industry launches in the spring and in the fall, so what I see, there's kind of about three different types of launches that happen or spa events that happen. So we have uh, like new service or product events. We have client appreciation events, and then we often have holiday events. And then sometimes they're a little bit of a blend of the two. Yeah. Um, but the commonalities for events is that the goal and the goal of these events are to sell to increase your sales and your bookings right exactly absolutely so yeah so we were we were absolutely you know some at some points of this program we were just like whoa <laughs> yeah, this would be awesome <laughs> so many of our spa owners out there who you know have have run events that you know they, they would consider successful but there's so many more pieces to it that you know we won't get into mm -hmm. today um but so many more pieces to it that um, they could use to scale their business. And, and like you said, just make those launches so much easier on them because, you know, it, it uh, you know, when we launch, when we host an event, we kind of just throw it all together and, you know, hope for the best. <laughs> it works. <laughs> and I think, you know, and there is success that, that does happen with it. Um, but we know that there's so much more success that can come with it by you know, some of these pieces that, that can come into play with it. So yeah. Yeah, so our, you know, where, where we wanted to be in terms of the spa industry and helping the spa industry is that we wanted to start um, offering a launch service to the spa industry so that they, they can launch their events much more easily and much more profitably and, you know, as far as and just smoothly because Lord knows, I mean, I've done my share of spa events and they are a crap ton of work on top of an already busy spa owner schedule. Yeah. And, you know, they're, they're very overwhelming as well, yeah. too. Like with busy spa owner schedule, you're, you're doing so many different aspects in your spa that, you know, to add one more task that has, you know, <laughs> hundreds of little tasks involved in can seem, can, and, and again, you don't know what you're missing either. So you don't know what you don't know. You don't know what, what you don't have to it. So, 
um, you know, it can become very, very overwhelming. And there's, you know, a lot of pieces to that where um, just even timing, you don't give yourself enough time to plan for it as well, too. So so that's kind of that starts off with kind of our first point. We've got eight, um, we've got eight reasons that we've laid out as to why, um, you know, you know, why spa owners are struggling with their events. And, and, you know, some of these points you're aware of, and some of these points you're, you're probably going to be surprised about. So, so listen in. So the first one was the fact that, you know, when you have the idea to host an event, it sounds like a great idea at the very beginning. Yeah, let's do an event. Um, it's kind of like childbirth. We forget what the last event, how, how stressful and, and crazy it was <laughs> until we get back into it again. Anyway, so, you know, it sounds like a great idea at first. And then what happens is spa owners quickly get overwhelmed, like you said, with this one extra task that actually is not a task. It's a project. I want you to look at this event as it's a, a little project on its own and that spot owners are not giving themselves enough time to, to prepare for the event and to, uh, to get people invited to the event. And that's, that's a big part of that success of an event is getting every all visibility on that, um, on the, um, on the event invite. Absolutely. And, you know, the other piece to that overwhelm is, um, just even from uh, your event, how smoothly it's going to go is a lot of times we don't give ourselves an itinerary to be able to follow. And so, you know, having an itinerary allows you to have a process of how your event's going to work. And so if you have any hiccups, you're prepared and ready um, to smooth those out as they come up because you know what's happening throughout the entire because a lot of times it happens where it's just, you know, people show up, you have an idea of what's what's going to happen, you know, you've got some, you know, maybe demos um, and some product promos, but if you don't have a, a very strategic plan and how you're going to map out to keep everybody's, you know, interest going and and um, their time worthwhile to be there as well. So yeah, and also to, you know, you, you, most spas haven't put a huge amount of time into um, the strategy of their offers. So, um, you know, we need that time uh, to be able to plan out so that we can find those places that are confusing, that may be confusing to guests. Um, so just, uh, can you share with us how long in terms of, um, like in terms of having a launch plan, like, cause we were shocked about how long you should plan out an event. <laughs> so our launch uh, plans are eight weeks long and I'll tell you they're, they're full of, um, you know, prep work to get done and get ready to execute um, properly so that you can get your messaging out there on time. Your team is on board. Um, you've got all the details mapped out so that, you know, from the start of your, your launching implementation to the time of your sales event and your, your sales promos are over, it's an eight week timeline. Where most, most in my experience, uh, working with spas and, you know, when I did spa events myself, mm -hmm. it was kind of more like two to three weeks <laughs> where <laughs> owners were like, let's do an event and it's three weeks down the road. And no wonder you are feeling crazy by the time you get to the event and wondering why you decide to do this because it's simply not enough time to plan it out. No, yeah. there's, there's too many pieces to it. And, and again, and, and there should be because you want, if you're going to run it, you might as well make it as successful as you possibly can. So you don't want to miss any of those pieces out and you don't want to rush it because that's where you're going to start seeing those, those things, you know, those hiccups start happening and, um, you know, maybe might not get as much as, as you wanted to out of it, or things can be a little bit confusing for, yeah. for us to be involved. Yeah. All right. And the next point to that is, um, you know, aside from having an itinerary, it's not having an effective marketing plan to, um, you know, have uh, maximize your guest show up rate as well. So I don't know about any other spawners out there. Um, if I've, I've run events, I've been part of events where, you know, we've had great planning, we've had lots of people show up, but then there's been those times where, you know, a week out, the spot owner wants to <laughs> have an event in a week, and we've tried to make it happen, and nobody shows up, and that's the worst as well, too. Right, and so I think this is also, um, this is also that kind of not having an effective, effective marketing plan for their event. A, it's about not having enough time to even execute, uh, or even to put together a plan, um, but 
many spas don't actually have a structured marketing system that all works together cohesively. So with an event and with any other part of your marketing, you definitely cannot just rely on one social media post. You will no. not get the bookings. You will not get the show up rate right, at all. So it needs to be paired with uh, an email marketing campaign um, with social media. You know, there's also uh, like having a sales page, like an event sales page is really critical. So, you know, not having that marketing plan as an event, if you're looking, if you're, if you're listening to this and thinking about your own event, this may prompt you to realize you actually need to put together a better marketing system right now so that when you do start planning your event, you've got that put together already. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the next point we want to talk about, about like in terms of what might, what you might be have experienced in terms of hosting an event um, that sometimes your offers aren't really clear at the event or um, and, and in terms of offers being clear, I'm talking about you know, selling services or a series of services, um, product bundles, all that kind of stuff. But there's two places where I see kind of going haywire here with offers being unclear, well, actually three, the messaging, like actual copy and how you're communicating what's for sale, um, not connecting client pain points to the service or the products that you're, you're uh, highlighting at that event. So, and what I mean by that is if, if you're just wanting to launch a product because you got a new product in or launch a new uh, piece of equipment because you got this new piece of equipment in, it, it has to connect with your client's pain points. And sometimes it's the time of year will make a difference on that as well. So we need to, you know, when we're doing launch management, we are looking at what you want to uh, offer at your event and then we're going to make sure that that offer is really clearly communicated and that it actually is connecting the dots for uh, your clients or prospective clients at that event. You know and then the, it's going to solve their problems. What's that? You know who it's for and how yeah. it's going to solve their problems. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, and then the third piece about offers not being clear is that um, uh, that your offers sometimes, sometimes spas are giving too deep a discounts um, and over giving. Um, in giver. order. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're givers. I mean, it's just part of who we are in this industry, but it's really important for us as launch managers to manage our spa owners' uh, expectations. And we've actually helped two spas in the past um, two or three weeks mm -hmm. do some little mini event launches, and they've gone really, really well. But one of the things in our initial meetings that we identified is that they wanted to give too much at the event. Like they had too many products they wanted to share, too many specials. And we're like, no, 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 let's, let's cut off some of the stuff and make it super, super relevant. Yeah. Very clear. Not, not too, it's not too busy. It can yeah. be very clearly identified what, what the um, outcome is for that. Yeah. Um, and the other part to that as well, too, is, you know, we don't have an itinerary for the event, for the event, but we don't actually have an event strategy. And <laughs> The event is the strategy and we know just from going through you know our launch management certification is that there are many 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 details to yeah, many um, strategies yeah so so i just want to just want to clarify what delia said in the spa industry traditionally spa owners feel that having an event is the marketing strategy <laughs> it <laughs> is a type of a, it's a type of um kind of revenue stream that you can do but within the the heading of events there's multiple strategic approaches in there so we want you to know that just because you're hosting an event doesn't doesn't necessarily mean you have an event strategy yeah uh, lots and lots of ways to boost those <laughs> oh yeah yeah we got some really cool ones there are some really neat ones that we that we learned in our launch certification program um, okay, so that was number four. Uh, spa owners tend to not have a launch strategy. The event is the strategy. Um, number five, Delia, do you want to dive into this one? Yep. Well, there's a lot of extra work and there's a lot of extra work 
to get the team prepared if you if you have a team. So you want to uh, make sure that your team members are, in, are involved in it and they also understand what's going on. But there's, you know, there's sometimes there can be pushback of, you know, do they need extra hours or, um, you know, if your culture is not where you want it to be, um, are you having issues with with your team not wanting to be there? They don't know or want to, or they don't think that it's their responsibility to be part of the sale or, or part of the upsell. Um, so there's those, they're not comfortable asking for the sale. There's, there's that piece to it as well, too. And I've run into these um, in the past as well, too, where compensation wasn't clear. So right. I mean, you have, to have those details hashed out with your team so that they feel that they know what's going on. It's no different than, you know, your day to day. Everybody needs to know what's happening within the spa. But if at the end of the event, you're like, oh, well, you know, I'm not uh, paying up commission on this because we had discounts or, you know, on retail sales or whatnot. Or I've worked at events before where I didn't actually get paid for them. We didn't know that after the fact. So you know, being very, very clear with your team and having the right culture and having the right team members on board who want to be there and be an active participant in it is, is extremely beneficial and something that definitely needs to be worked out ahead of time. Absolutely. And, you know, what we learned in our launch management certification is that that is a huge, um, it, it, we manage that part in terms of making sure that your team members who are helping with the event are in on the planning. So, um, you know, I always recommend to my coaching clients, if they have a team, a lot of times they're used to just doing it themselves. <laughs> That's a little bit of a control issue, but when you are able to start delegating, um, man, that sure opens up a lot of time and space for you. Mm -hmm. And, but this point is very specific in terms of when you are, are having an event, you absolutely need to make sure do the extra work to make sure your team is prepared. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you don't want to end up having a great event and it wasn't clearly communicated how your team was going to be paid. And then there's just like bad feelings and resentment. And the next time you go to do, to do an event, you think that you're going to have a team that wants to be on board? Probably not. Probably not. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. All right. So, okay. So those were four, five points that we wanted to share about what spa owners, you know, most likely experience when they are launching. Now, here's a few things that you may not realize that you're missing when it comes to launching your event. So the first thing that I wanna say is that just like your marketing, events are a numbers game. <laughs> so mm -hmm. you absolutely need to be clear about what are your sales goals? You know, we are, we've, we've created um, good, better, and best goals for our, the clients that we've already worked with for event strategy and event uh, and launch management. Um, and so at the end of the, the event, we go back and we look at, well, did we hit the, the good, better, or best um, numbers? And that way we can make changes for the next event. But bottom line is you, you want to have some sales goals. I think most spas go into events and it's just like, well, whatever we sell, we great. <laughs> or I hope we sell more than last year. Exactly. So we, we like, we want to get a little bit more granular and very strategic with that. So um, you definitely need to have some sales goals for your events. Um, you want to know, uh, you want to be looking at what attendee goals are, you know, how are you getting people to register and show up? You know, there's all sorts of little, you know, tips and tricks to to encourage people to show register and show up. Um, and then you also need to have offer goals. So that would be whatever you're selling at your event. But what's the goal of those services or products? Um, also, you need to take into consideration, do you have enough stock? Do you have too much stock for inventory? Um, are you is your pricing too high or too low? And are you offering incentives um, at your event? So it's all a numbers game. And what that means is that um, what we saw, the spa industry could be doing way, way, way better is the marketing piece for their events to get way more eyeballs on them, especially because this past year has shifted in-person events into online spa events, okay? So this is a huge opportunity for our industry to, um, to dive into because you can have so many more people on 
you know, whether it's a Zoom, uh, like kind of like a master class or whether you're doing it on Facebook Live or IGTV, you can have way more people um, attending, listening, uh, even maybe doing their own little demo at home, uh, which means that you've got that you're playing with that, that numbers game because you'll, you know, how many people show up distills down into how many people buy and all that kind of stuff. So just really what we want you to, to realize is that you, um, it's a numbers game. So the more people you're able to market to, the more eyeballs you get and the more people that you have um, saying yes to your event. And that's how you can set your, your good, better and best goals as well too, because it's, it's really, really based off of your audience and your, and your list um, uh, numbers. And like Kirsten, you just said, you know, it, it filters down. How many do you have on your list? How many sign up to come for the event out of those signups? How many people actually show up out of the people that show up? How many people purchase? How many people book? <laughs> um, so if you, if you want to have, um, you know, a higher, higher profitability in your sales event, then having, having those numbers will definitely help to increase your show up rates and your purchases. And by tracking all that stuff, because we've got a nifty spreadsheet for that. <laughs> Why was I? I get excited with spreadsheets. <laughs> but then, you, yeah. But then, when you when you track that in a spreadsheet, next you can use that those numbers for your next event to make uh, better decisions. Exactly. So, in and you know, maybe some of you are not new to events and you've been successfully launching, but you just you know now you want to scale it. Or if you are new to launching, um, setting those benchmarks gives you that opportunity, like you just said, to um, you know kind of dive in and figure, okay, where did where could we maybe tweak this here and there so that we can get better results from it? Or if you're already being successful with it, okay, where can we now move ahead to to grow with this next event? Absolutely. All right, the uh, second thing that you might not be aware of when it comes to event launching is that it requires much more email communication than you are probably used to or comfortable with. And the other piece of this is that, um, the, well, the other problem with this is because a lot of spas aren't, uh, don't have their regular email marketing going consistently they, their list, email list is really small, uh, meaning it's just their current client clientele. Um, and their list isn't, their email list isn't really warmed up. Like if, if, if you as a spa owner haven't been sending like a monthly email newsletter, and then all of a sudden you're sending out three emails over a period of, you know, a week to 10 days to invite people to this event, your list might feel a little like, Ugh, right? So- wow. <laughs> yeah, so so we want before, and this is why we are talking about this at the beginning of June, <laughs> when we know that many spas will be launching an event for November. If you are, you know, we're just back up the date. So if you're launching an event in mid-November or at the end of November for the holiday season, and you absolutely need eight weeks to plan this out. So now you're at the you know end of September to really start getting into your planning. That means that now at the beginning of June, if you don't aren't, you know, if you don't have a warmed up email list that's used to getting emails from you, you got to start doing that right now. Mm -hmm. Got to wake up that dormant uh, email list yes. so that yeah. they are not just shocked by by these invite emails. Yeah. And again, going back to what we were talking about before in terms of this is just part, you know, launching works into your current marketing system. Um, again, this might just kind of trigger you to be like, okay, I need to start sending out consistent emails, even if it's just like the beginning of the month for like what's happening at the spa. Okay. That's, that's good enough to start right now. Um, all right. You want to finish up with the last point here of, of what they might not be aware of with launching? Yeah, the other piece to that as well, too, um, again, if you want to expand your audience, oftentimes when you do have an email list, it's just your your clients. And so with that, it's really difficult to expand your visibility um, because you don't have an email marketing system that goes beyond your monthly newsletters if you're doing them every month or if, even if you're doing them biweekly. So you're, you're limiting yourself in um, your viewability and how many people you can still communicate and nurture, whether it be for the sales event or down the road. Um, that's often a, a big, a big, I, I'd say pain point for spa owners is that they just have their audience. And if you're wanting to expand your business, then you need new eyeballs on it. 
So, uh, and what I think what Delia is getting to about this is that a part of your marketing email marketing system, like it's going, you know, once you're starting to think about developing your marketing system, but when you're looking at your email marketing system, it's not just monthly email newsletters. Uh, and what, uh, what Delia is getting at is uh, we're talking about, you know, having an opt-in on your website so that when new consumer traffic is coming to your website, even if they're not ready to book, they can opt in to something. Um, now, most spa websites have like join our newsletter kind of opt-in. It's not good enough. It's, it's too boring. Uh, what we're talking about is like a new client opt-in. So maybe it's a, um, a strategic discount to get a new client in for the first time. Maybe it's a value added. Um, maybe it's a, a PDF checklist that they can download. This allows you to start collecting emails beyond your, just the people who have already been in to see you. And we want to, um, we want to express how important this is if you are wanting to have your spa business visibility past your existing email list. It's all about getting an opt in on your website. And that way, you know, you consistently have new opt ins coming into your list, you send them a little nurture sequence, then they get onto your main list where they're getting your monthly newsletters or hopefully fingers crossed at least twice a month newsletters. Exactly. <laughs> So that is what, you know, that's, you know, eight, eight pieces there, eight little nuggets of information um, about why you are or could be struggling with your event launch and or, you know, maybe you've been doing okay with your events uh, and having some great success, but you want to optimize what you're doing and do it better uh, in terms of maybe just more money um, for your local location, or maybe it's actually going past your local location and getting visibility from uh, around the country, uh, around you know North America, around the world. So now that you know COVID has kicked us in the butt in terms of um, you know mm -hmm. not being able to be in the treatment room, um, okay, spa owners, like let's take advantage of it. The world is used to. Uh, consuming information online, even more so now, and especially with the spa industry. So um, looking at how you want to approach your event launches is different now. You've got more opportunity. Absolutely. And with that, <laughs> over the next few months, we will be, uh, you know, dripping out. You'll likely be hearing a lot more about um, our launches and uh, spa events that we'll be that we'll be managing with our certification and and offering, you know, a lot more tidbits as well too that you can take to start offering your launches successfully. Yeah, we. So we had, uh, I mentioned earlier, we had two clients um, that just happened to want to do online events while we were in the middle of our certification. And I kind of threw Delia and I into uh, the fire from the fuck frying pan <laughs> when I said, hey, you know, is it possible? Are you up for trying this with a couple of my existing coaching clients? And um, each of those clients did a uh, online event one was on Zoom, one was on IGTV. Um, uh, I don't think uh, I don't think either one of them have done an online event before. Um, okay. One of them is doing a fair amount of virtual sort uh, skin services. The other not so much. But what we were thrilled about, and we only had what two weeks to kind of pull it all together. <laughs> so really it was kind of, yeah. I'm lost launch in in two weeks it was a much smaller much smaller launch so we were able to manage pieces to it and we had a lot of the the setup already um, ready to go so it made it a lot easier for us but it was definitely um you know great to see all the pieces come together and you know one of our our clients she sold out of all of her tickets on, <laughs> on well, sold, actually so um both of these uh spa owners wanted just 20 people. Uh, they, they sold kits uh, for a, a demo type of event. Um, they bought, they sold out of their 20 kits fairly quickly. The first client that we did this with sold out within, I think four days. Mm -hmm. um, and our, the other second client sold out within 24 hours. She actually had to try to find more product to put in those kits. Mm -hmm. um, and then at the event, the show up rate was incredible. Like, like like 80 90 percent 
98%. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. and in terms, they were both solos. They'd never done an online event before. And they were both at about the $2,000 mark in terms of um, sales. So it was a great start. It was a great uh, place for us to get um, our feet wet in terms of, you know, working in a spa business. And um, we saw lots of places where for in the fall, because both of them want to do event, an online event again, the feedback from their clients was incredible, you know, right away, when are you going to do that again? <laughs> um, and so now that we've had, you know, we've got like kind of a benchmark, um, you know, we've got lots of ideas and how to, uh, to scale that, because really it was about testing it out, see how this launch management plan works it worked really well. And now we're going to teach spot owners how to scale that um, so that they're doubling, you know, a solo can double that and then double again. And the other piece of that is as well too, and it goes back to, you know, you don't have to do everything alone because when you've got that collaboration of, of other people helping it just, it takes that pressure off of you as well too, to have to think of all the things that, that need to happen with it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's impossible for us to, for one person to think of all the things and having a launch manager in your corner, it just takes a huge amount of pressure off of a spa owner. It takes a huge amount of time off of the spa owner. Um, and you know, it's, it's fresh eyes on, on a, on a launch and, and kind of what your offers are. So yeah, we're pretty excited. Can't wait. <laughs> so stay tuned for more information about, um, our launch management service that will likely be where our plan is to have that going launched mm -hmm. in September. <laughs> um, but we plan on having more conversations about, um, launching in the spa industry and what that looks like and how you can do it better and all that, all the good stuff. Absolutely. Look right. forward to it. All right. Thanks for dealing. Uh, thanks, Delia, for for coming on with us again this month and sharing your knowledge. Thank you.